checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. So we, re we recap Iron Sheik, Precious Paul, the Persian Clubs. They actually replay all 50 reps Paul Learning did. They did the whole segment. Basically. And then uh, Bill Watts explains that Sheik beat Frank Motti in a wrestling match, but then Skandor Eckler stalled for time. But we're in the ring now to pick this up. So Iron Sheik must do 100 reps with the Persian Clubs, or Skandar Akbar must pay Precious Paul $2,000. That's a lot of money in 1981. And the crowd is chanting USA, and Paul Ellering is dancing. That's quite the sight to behold. I cannot believe that on one show I'm watching the end of Paul Ellering's career, and on another show that same week I'm watching the beginning of his career. Basically. Yeah. In the, he'd, he'd been around for like three years at this point. And he is such a gimmick. Mm -hmm. He is you, like a fan out of the crowd that worked out a lot and is pretending he's superstar Billy Graham. He dances like a sapphire. I Absolutely guess. nothing about it that feels genuine. No. He's a guy <laughs> pretending to be a professional wrestler. Like he's the poster child for this. So <laughs> Sheik starts going with the clubs and Reeser is the man's name, the ring announcer. Oh my yes. god. Reeser's counting along. Did anyone notice? Oh, yes. I don't know if this is an editing glitch. No. But Reeser can't count. He fucked up. He got to about 60. And then he he's like, he's... he's he went he's, back to the 50s. Well, he's losing track. So he goes 59, 60, mm -hmm. 1, 2, 3, 54, 50. And I'm like, what the fuck? You just, you just, you just went backwards, brother. You screw the Iron Sheik. And... Like, Iron Sheik just keeps spinning him. Don't matter to him. I'm like, this poor fucking guy. Because by about 99, he was starting to get tired. Mm -hmm. But it was actually 119 because he went from 62 to 52, which means he had to go, I guess it would be 10 more. 100, I'm, 113. I'm like, oh, my God. So, yeah, poor Iron Sheik had to do an extra 10. And you could tell, like, about half the fans figured out that he fucked up because when he starts over at 53 or whatever, you all of a sudden start hearing people heckle him. And he just kept going, and at least he made it through there. God. So he does 113 reps with these Persian clubs, does the Iron Sheik. And Iron Sheik is like, he does the one where you go like this, and you kind of yep. go around in the big circle, yeah. and Ellering's just going, like, it, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's just working the triceps. Yeah, That's what he's, he's doing. Basically, yeah, yeah. Well, this thing's a weight, they said, 75 pounds apiece. That is, that is the story. That is the story. Yes. So Precious Paul admits Sheik's met the challenge. But he wants to give this another try. Last week was last week. This week is this week. I'm going to try. I was out for 444 days. Maybe I'll try for that many reps. Picks up in clubs. He gets it to 52. And the Iron Sheet kicks him right in the gut. I knew it was going to happen. I thought it was going to happen last week, and I couldn't figure out why. And the answer was, well, we just had to have a cliffhanger. And then we'll do the exact thing you're expecting on this week's show. He booted him in the gut. Which actually made sense because last week, Ellering went first. So it actually didn't make sense for Sheik to, you know, whack him in the stomach because the idea was he had to set the record and then, you know, Sheik had to double it. So by, by you know, Sheik avoiding it and then the next week they come back and then Sheik hits the 100 and then Ellering's going to do more. That's when he boots him. In a way. It was on, like, neck bone. It doesn't matter because the, the Sheik doubled what he did the week prior so well no but now ellering was going to try and do significantly more than Sheik. Nah. Sheik could not have that the the deal was already done he didn't have to pay two grand well but then paul said i want to try it again and skandar said okay, said okay. so All right. regardless Sheik is laying in the beating bill watts on commentary references not only pearl harbor but also comedian the embassy fun stuff here in this entertainment show lighthearted topics so Sheik gets the camel clutch, and then Paul Ellering just gets out of it and makes a comeback. And I gotta say, we've seen him two weeks in a row here. Paul Ellering, not a very good wrestler. Mm -mm. No, man, when he uh, went for that neck breaker and he got hit in the stomach with that flag and yeah. he sold it by doing a seat drop on his ass. Yes. Howled. Howled. <laughs> yes. He was a significantly better manager yep. than he was a wrestler. Yep. Correct. And so they beat him up until they are done. Paul Orndorff versus Brian Blair. Awesome match. Super intense. Doing all sorts of holds as the announcers are discussing the figure four leg lock and how it's the ins and outs of this hold that we've seen over the past couple of weeks. So so last week, Brian said that everybody uses the figure four in Mid-South. Yes. And there was actually a reason for it. Because 
Paul, or, or, sorry, Paul Orndorff used the, the figure four leg lock and won, and B. Brian Blair used the figure four leg lock and won, and they set up a match against each other this week. Yeah, but like Ted DiBiase was using the figure four leg lock. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, understood. everybody was using the figure four leg lock. Yeah. It was but, like the move. But that, that played out later. Go so they, uh, they're doing the super match, and uh, poor Watts. I actually felt bad for Bill Watts. He's alone on commentary here and gets a coughing fit and uh, has to fight through it. So Brian Blair puts on the figure four like everyone else does, and Orndorff reverses the figure four like he does in all his matches. Because last time we saw Orndorff, he reversed DiBiase's figure four, and DiBiase was saved by the bell. Well, they're not close to the bell this time. And Orndorff reverses this figure four. He pushes up. You can see he's doing a calf slicer to Brian Blair. And Blair's screaming and screaming. And the referee calls for the bell. And Blair shakes his head, no, no, no. But the referee is there's two refs there to explain it. And uh, the, the Brian Blair never submitted. They make that very clear. But the referee, at his own discretion, stopped the match for his own good. And Bill Watts on commentary says, that was a good call to save the man's leg. I have so much to say about this. Like, First, you, don't, you didn't like the finish? No, I love the finish. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I was like, why don't they do this more often to save the baby finish? There's so much. The finish of this match, for maybe the only time in the history of planet Earth, was a reversed figure four. Right. And the other guy could not escape, and the match was stopped. That's amazing. Number two, they got the submission over. Without having the baby face quit. Mm-hmm. I love this with all my heart. Great stuff. I love when they sent that referee over to make sure everybody was... I got to make this abundantly clear, he says. For sure, you got to know. No, he didn't quit. All right. I got it. Let's make that clear. Mm-hmm. Ted DiBiase versus Mike Boyer. I figured out who Mike Boyer looks like. It's Benicio Del Toro. <laughs> a, a, a thicker Benicio de Toro with a big head of hair. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They clobbered each other for a while. DiBiase had a wonky power slam and won with... <laughs> a wonky power slam. <laughs> this fucking guy gave him no help. Yeah. This guy leaped sideways, and DiBiase had to grab him out of midair, and as the guy... I mean, the guy is stiff as a board, sideways. Just straight out like this, stiff as a board, and DiBiase has to turn this guy over, and he power slams him. I was like, end this fucking thing. And then he did. He did. With, Thank God. How did he end it, Brian? With a figure four. Mm-hmm. The universal finisher. You're telling me he used a figure four leg lock a fig- as well? A figure four leg lock huh. on my submission. Interesting. This Boyer fellow was not good. He sucked. <laughs> it may have been Benicio Del Toro. He totally <laughs> sucked. Benicio Del Toro would be a significantly better wrestler yeah. than this guy. Bob Roop and Bob Orton Jr. versus Mike Bond and Frank Monty. Okay, this I could get into. All right. <laughs> what a team. I got a lot to say about this Bob one, too. Bob Roop and Cowboy Bob Orton. Golly. They were awesome. Since we are describing wrestlers, I would describe Mike Bond and Frank Monty as Hall and Oates. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought about it before, but I totally see it now. See, there's guys, there's guys that, like, when they have a squash match, it's just, eh, I'm going to go in, I'm going to hit some moves. I'm going to beat this nerd up. I'm going to pin him, all that kind of stuff. But there's guys like Bob Roop and, and Bob Orton Jr. who are like, we're going to have a match with these fuckers. And they're like running spots. And they're, I mean, it was, I, I, I could not believe this match. And they just, they just did a bunch of stuff. And then they beat him. It was great. I liked this. So Randy Orton's been around a long time now. And every, yeah. every couple of years, he'd do something to change his look. We'd get new tattoos. For a while there, he was like wrapping his wrists all the, all the way up to the elbow. Now he's just 500 pounds. That's his new makeover look. His next makeover needs to be bringing back his father's fringed vest. Yeah. Surprised he hasn't. I am too. Wearing the pink hat boy hat. Yeah. Or the, or the, the, the hair, hairdo. Or the perm. Yeah. The perm half bro. So they had a super fun match. Frank Monty, we've seen him twice now. He looks really good both times. And uh, they beat him up for a while. He hot tags Mike Bond. Mike Bond makes the outrunner's hot tag of punches and body slams. The heels do a crisscross. In the middle of this, they do a blind tag. So it is blind. Bond can't see it. And so when he tries to cover, he's wiped out from behind. And they do a backbreaker, double smash combo. And then I think Bob Orton Jr. hit in this match my new all-time favorite pile driver. Mm -hmm. He grabs the dude. Right? Lifts him up upside down. And he starts to bounce. He like squats and stands up, 
and Squatch just stands up. And I was like, what are you doing? What Stretching his neck out. What he was doing. <laughs> driving the blood to his head. Was like building momentum. Because yes. each time he bounced up and down, he got a little higher. So on the third bounce, he's like at maximum peak. Then he drops straight down with the added momentum now because he's bouncing up and down. He drops straight down. Mike Bond springs straight up into the air. His feet are pointing straight up. His arms are pointing straight up. <laughs> Howled of laughter. And Bob Orton pinned him. awesome. I yeah. love this match. Yeah, and then the announcers are like, where are these men working together to learn all of these great moves? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I, that I, pile driver on Daryl Hall was awesome. <laughs> That's where he started singing. <laughs> Wrestling hurts. I loved it. Pass me that mic. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.